everyone today. My name's Eric. As always, I want to thank you for coming by and checking out my video today. On this episode of Smoking, I'm going to show you how to make chicken pot pie soup. Now, this is a real simple recipe, and the star ingredient is a chicken. And you know what? I just bought one of these rotisserie chickens that you buy at either Costco's or Sam Club. Uh, but you know what? Actually, a lot of the grocery stores have started to make them too. And so, you know, you probably uh, have picked up one of these in the past and, you know, just probably just devoured by itself. But by mixing it with a few other ingredients, you can make a delicious soup that's nice and hearty. And uh, during a cold winter's night, it's going to really uh, warm you up from the inside and out. So like I said, I got the chicken, I got some potatoes, I got some carrots, celery, and onions, some mushrooms, some garlic. We're going to throw in some uh, peas, some corn. Uh, real simple. It takes around uh, 25 minutes to a half hour to kind of do everything in one pot and you have a delicious soup that also makes great leftovers. So stick around. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Let's get cooking. Okay, the first thing you want to do is take that chicken, cut it apart, and get it into like uh, little pieces here. So I just uh, chopped it up with a knife on this cutting board here, and I'm just using the lid for the container just to hold those uh, chicken pieces in there. That's it. I'll meet you over at the stove here, and uh, we'll get ready sauteing those vegetables. Okay, grab a Dutch oven or just like a nice uh, soup pot. And we're going to start by melting six tablespoons of butter. I already turned on the heat here. And what we're going to do here, once this is melted down, is we're going to go ahead and saute the onions, the carrots, and the celery. Now I'll leave the full recipe with all the measurements down in the video description below. So we'll be back in a second. We'll just give this a minute to kind of melt this butter. Okay, so the butter's almost completely melted. Like I said before, we got some celery, some onion, and some carrots here. And we're gonna saute them just to kind of soften them up before we add the rest of the ingredients. And this is only gonna take maybe five to seven minutes. Just let them kind of get a little translucent, those onions. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, it's been a few minutes. We don't have to cook this completely, but just like this. The butter's all melted, it's all incorporated. You can tell the celery and onions are starting to get soft. That's perfect. Now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of minced garlic and one eight ounce package of mushrooms, okay? We're going to continue to cook this for another four or five minutes. Just going to kind of soften up those mushrooms a little bit. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. All right, it's been around four or five minutes. You can see the mushrooms are starting to soften up here. Now there's a little bit of uh, butter liquid and liquid from these uh, vegetables in here. So what we're going to do to kind of thicken this up, because this is a soup now, is we're going to add some flour. So what we're going to do now is add a third cup of flour. Keep the heat on and this is going to be used to thicken up the sauce. So what we're going to do here, this isn't going to take long, just around a minute. Keep stirring until you don't see any flour. You don't want any big chunks of flour. You don't want it to taste like flour. It's just used to kind of thicken up the sauce here. Or the soup I should say, not sauce. So I'll keep stirring, we'll be back in a minute. All right, it's been around a minute. No more flour pr present here. So now we're gonna add six cups of chicken stock, okay? I'm using the low sodium because that rotisserie, whoop, that rotisserie chicken's gonna have a lot of uh, salt in it. And you can always add some at the end. Now I'm gonna add some yellow potatoes in there like so now we're going to bring this up to a simmer 
because we got to cook these potatoes even though they're in little small bite-sized pieces they're still raw we got to kind of simmer them for probably 12 to 15 minutes to soften up so let me bring this to a boil we'll be back in a second all right it's been a few minutes you can see it's starting to come to a boil you know give it a stir occasionally make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom of the pot so what we're gonna do I'm gonna add a little bit of ground black pepper I'm not gonna add any salt right now because the chicken stock although it was low sodium had salt in it and the rotisserie chickens got a lot of salt in it I'm gonna just kinda leave salt out of it completely until the final stage where, where I'll go ahead and uh, taste test it and that's where I can add salt if I feel it's necessary my old standby is you can always add salt once you add too much you can't take it out so now I'm gonna reduce this to a simmer I'm gonna put a lid on here and I'm not gonna cover it completely I'm just gonna kinda leave it cracked like this on one side and we're gonna let that go for probably 12 to 15 minutes we'll be back in a second all right since I got 15 minutes drink review time this is a new one from line and kugels juicy peach this is their very first sour beer and uh, refreshing and tart it's very low alcohol 4.4 percent but uh, they're trying to experiment with some other beers which I'm glad I really like their beers but they opened up another thing across the street another brewery they're gonna try some different things I hope they do some stronger IPAs and stuff but when I heard they had a sour beer had to try it so that's what I'm having this is my daughter Ava Grace Hi. and my son Kyle. Hello. Now my daughter Ava Grace is going to try Mott's Mighty Flying Fruit Punch. Mighty Juice. Vitamin A, C, and D. Brand new. A lot of vitamins in that one. A lot of vitamins. You're not going to believe what Kyle's having. <laughs> and then Kyle, we were at the store the other day and uh, you know I like Coke. This is a new flavor of Coca-Cola called edition. Starlight, limited edition. Space flavored. Space flavored, he <laughs> said. Space. So we were at the checkout and the person checking us out, I said, man, I wonder how that tastes like. And what did he say? It's stellar. <laughs> he goes, oh yeah, I tried it before. What did it taste like? It's stellar. So that's what Kyle's having. It's like strawberry flavor, it's apple flavor, it's cinnamon flavor, and then there's space flavor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what space flavor means. <laughs> Alright. It's like, I'm having space flavor. It tastes like space. Alright. <laughs> anyway, guys, now take it easy on this. I don't want you to drink it all, right? Alright. Right. And then cut up. <laughs> drink it all. Come on. It's almost my bedtime. I know it's almost your That's bedtime. Fine. And that's why, why I don't want you to drink it all. Yeah, okay. Well, that is very good. She'll have to end her streak this time of drinking it all. We're going to be at the end like, I... All right. Cheers, this smells good. exactly like a normal Coke. All right, we'll pour it and see. Oh my gosh, I love this. I don't know. Nice. This looks like a regular Pilsner beer, nice and light. Oh, I do smell peach. Oh, smell mm. mine. Sure no, smell it smells like, like fruit punch. Fruit punch, doesn't it? I like how they called it flying. Oh, yeah, it's punch. like red. It's not like regular Coke. It's like more red. Alright. No, this is the kind of stuff I like doing reviews on because I have a lot to say on stuff like this. Okay. There's, um, at first, okay. I wanted to say it looked almost like, uh, like that red, uh, Mountain Dew or something. It looked like cherry and then it gave more of a pomegranate, pomegranate-y look as I yeah. poured it in more because we'll it get, got darker. Get, 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 and get, now get, it's get, like really dark it looks like black cherry all right guys well as always i appreciate you watching cheers thank you so much cheers to each other come okay. little How cheers let's take a sip look at the camera oh. tell them what we think Ooh, that is peachy and it is a little sour a little tartness <clears throat> But a little bit of sweetness on the end, but not too much, which I like. I don't like sweet stuff in beer. Mmm. Boy, this would be refreshing on a hot summer day for sure. Mmm. All right, everybody, guys. Stop sipping. What do you think? Mm. Look at the camera. Mighty Fruit it, Punch. Well, for Fruit Punch, it's kind of like tropical, kind of. Okay. Because it's Fruit Punch. <laughs> <laughs> 
punch. <laughs> okay, be careful. Don't knock things over. So is it good? Would you try it again? I would. It's actually like, let's, if, wait, I need to check the grinds and sugar real quick. Okay. I always do that. Make sure there's no No, this one said 50%. Get, make it bounce off the walls. This one said 50% less sugar, so I don't think it's that Stop bad. Honey Abe says I this can't contains see 1% juice. It's like All what's right. in here. Well, while you look, so Kyle. I want to know what the special edition Starlight Coke tastes like. It's 13. out of this world. <laughs> Guys, 13 grams I'm, of sugar. I'm sorry. We got a lot of corny no. jokes today. 13 grams? 13, yeah. Okay, well that's not too bad. Alright, so how's it taste? It's, uh... It tastes almost like gingerbread. And oh, has, oh uh, ginger. Let me try. And it has like a well, fruity aftertaste. It does smell like I had to try flavor. to pinpoint what it tastes like for a minute. Yeah, there's a little bit of kind of space ginger flavor in there. Flavored. It says right on the bottle, space flavor. But it also tastes like fruit. Now, would you prefer that over just a regular Coca-Cola Classic? Um, uh, I love Coke, and I love all the different Cokes and everything, but this gives normal Coke a run for its money. This is... The only thing is, it's limited edition. So if well, you, you know what? If it's popular enough, they might come out. If you haven't and, tried this, get your hands on it while you can, because well, this is something worth trying. All right, Eva Grace, you weren't supposed to drink it all. Okay. <laughs> As always, guys, I'm gonna. Uh, I appreciate you watching. We're gonna drink these probably around another five minutes. We're gonna add a few more ingredients, and then we're pretty much done with our chicken pot pie soup, so This took me a long time. I was trying to surprise you guys with an empty cup. I was trying to drink it really. Okay. Cheers, Kyle. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll so be back hard. in a second. With an empty cup, guys. With an empty <laughs> cup, once again. Once again. Right, it's been around 15 minutes. I've been kind of stirring it occasionally here. You want to test those potatoes, make sure they're uh, tender. And I just did, they're nice and tender. So now what I'm going to do is add the rest of the ingredients. First, the chicken. The beautiful, beautiful chicken. Then we're going to add, I got one can of drained corn. You can use the frozen corn, but I just happen to have a can handy. <laughs> so that's what I used, okay? But what I did have that was frozen was some peas. <laughs> you can also use a can. So I'm going to put the peas in there, then I'm going to add a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Okay, that's going to add a little bit of thickness to it and a little bit more richness. And then a quarter cup of fresh char chopped uh, parsley. Alright, now we're going to give this a good stir, all this stuff. We're going to bring it up again to a simmer. And basically, it's pretty much done. You just want to make sure these frozen peas and the corn are heated up and not cold. Oh, look at this. All right. I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit, kind of just medium low. And we'll get this uh, up to a simmer. We'll be back in a second. All right, so I brought it up to a simmer. Look at how wonderful this looks. I mean, look at this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now is the time to taste it and season accordingly. Okay, I haven't put any salt in here. So let me try a little bite here, or a little sip, I should say, of the broth. Oh, that's good. Mmm. But you know what? It does need a little bit of salt. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. And we're going to put a little bit more of ground black pepper. And this is pretty much done. So I'm just going to kind of stir it real good. Let it simmer for a minute or two. And I'm going to turn this down on kind of low right now since it's kind of bubbling and uh, give it a taste in another 30 45 seconds see if I need to add any more salt and we'll dish this out and give it a sample in just a second but look at this oh my goodness man oh man alright I'm looking forward to this it smells wonderful be back in a minute 
All right, here we are, just giving it a good stir. It's perfectly seasoned now. I don't want to steam up the camera, but man. Look at that. Wow. What a, what a delicious comfort food during a winter, fall night, huh? Oh, yeah. And well, it smells. We're not fall. We're actually winter. We're winter. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, yeah, this is really well, We're going to serve this with some oh. uh, biscuits. Oh, man. All right. We'll scoop it out in just a second. All right, guys. Look at this. Man, oh, man. I'm hungry. It's dinner time. Now, it's pretty thick here. I'm going to try it. You could always kind of add a little bit more uh, chicken stock if you think it's too thick. But you know what? I kind of like it like this. It's nice and hearty. Look at that. Okay. I can't wait to try this. Man, oh, man. Look at that. Oh, the smell. It smells really good. It's got everything you need in there, right? Let me get a little broth. Look at that. Perfect way to complement some, uh, you know, rotisserie chicken that you picked up at the store. Now, the only thing we need to do now is just top it off with a little bit of parsley. There we go. We'll be back to give this a sample in just a second. Welcome back. I'm here with my wife, Monica. Hi. And we're serving this with some uh, buttermilk biscuits. Um, you know, just since we don't have a crust on this chicken pot pie, you can kind of substitute it with a good biscuit. All right. And it smells so good. It smells so oh good. Oh, my right. gosh. And you can serve this different ways, by the way. I mean, there's, yeah. There's right. so many things you could do with it. It's this. been cooling off for a little bit. It's still kind of hot. It's still hot. I'm, I'm really jones in the he'll, time. He'll eat things when they're boiling, and I'm like, uh, I have to wait for like 10 minutes past you to eat something. Oh, no. Mmm. You know, it does taste like the filling of a chicken pot pie. <laughs> it really does. And I'm not just mm. saying that. Wow, is that good, huh? Mm -hmm. Ooh. That is really good. And it's not it's not too salty like some pies tend to be. Ooh, this is good. Well, the secret is don't add salt in the beginning. Especially since you have rotisserie chicken. The rotisserie chicken has a lot of salt in it, a lot of sodium. And so does the chicken stock, I found, even if you use the low sodium. So just let it all come to simmer, blend together, taste it, then add a little bit at a time until you find that perfect amount of seasoning. Mm. Mm. But you really uh, seasoned it perfectly. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. There's, and it's so creamy. It's not mm. too soupy. It's not too dry. It's it's really good. It's a great way to take a store-bought rotisserie chicken and turn it into something special, especially if it's a cold uh, winter night. Mm. Mm. And it smells delicious too, huh? But tonight we're happening to have a warm winter night. Yeah, we're in uh, what? what we hit like the high 30s. I'm like, what? <laughs> Where are the? And yeah, remember earlier coming home from the store, I took my jacket off and it was like 35. I'm like, I'm hot. Yeah, <laughs> it's been so cold when it gets up to 35, 40. We're like, oh boy. This is hot. Indian summer. Yeah, mm. let's get outside. <laughs> this is really good. Now, yeah. let's try it with the biscuits. Okay. Yeah? Let's rip one open here. Oh, yeah. Okay, you want to share one with me? Mama likes her buttermilk biscuits. Okay. No, my own biscuits. All right. Now, here's what I was saying. You could do it different ways, right? You could dip, like some people like to do, like some people. Mm -hmm. Or what I would do is put it in a more flat bowl with just edges that come up. Mm. I would open face this with butter and then pour this soup over the top and eat it like pie. I just put it like that? Well, I like to do it. I don't know. We all have mm. our preferences, but... Yeah. Good though. This sure beats the uh, Marie Callender's frozen pot pie. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's good. Big time. But like I said, I would open face it and put it on top. I think that would just give me a bite of biscuit with every bite of soup. But dipping it's fine too. I mean, mm. it is good. Wow. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. I would also love if you click the little logo on the bottom of the screen there. 
uh, that's to subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe, then you'll be notified whenever I take a, bring a new video out. And the video uh, link above and below is to my website, ericsmokingbarbecue.com. Go check it out. I have all my videos, all my recipes, photos, the whole bit. As always, guys, I appreciate you stopping by and watching my video. Thanks for your continued support. Give oh, this yeah. give this one a try. It's delicious. This is probably uh, in my top ten. Yeah, it's yeah. very good. Very, very good. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.